Hello. Today we're going to go over externalities. An externality is any time an agent in the economy is behaving in such a way that they impact other agents in the economy without that action being accounted for. Externalities can be good or bad, and as such, we label externalities as positive or negative externalities. Any sort of agent can produce an externality, but to show examples, let's start at the producer side. An example of a positive externality that producers could do to others is say the, the production of their good makes it easier for other goods to be produced. We can see this with something like a fertilizer plant that unintentionally spews out fertilizer that then helps the farm next to them grow without any costs associated to that farm. That would be a positive externality to the farm which is unaccounted for with our classic dichotomy of supply and demand and equilibrium. On the flip side, production can also cause negative externalities. We could see this with toxic waste being spewed out into the environment by you know, maybe the production of some sort of good like a car. That can negatively impact everybody in the society. And we can see this by you know, potentially it causes harm to that same farm that's next door. Now their crops don't grow as much. And so we have a negative externality, which is also not accounted for in our equilibrium traditionally. Production is not the only type of externality that we could see though. Any agent in the economy or in civilization in general can produce externalities, both positive and, ex and negative. A negative externality that any agent could do you know, think about if you played your guitar too loud, um, too late at night, you're producing a negative externality for your neighbors. So with that framework in mind, let's take a look at how we deal with this mathematically speaking. To start, we're looking at a positive externality here. This is the production of two different types of goods, roses and pots, and um, specifically honey for bees that we put into pots. So these two different goods are going to interact with each other, and we can kind of see this through the cost functions that we're going to take a look at in a second. So to start, let's rewrite the information that we have from this kind of block of text. So first, we know that honey pots can be sold at $2 each in the market, and we know that our rose bushels can be sold at $10 uh, per bushel. We also know the cost function associated with honey, which is going to be h squared over 4. And then we know the cost function also associated with producing roses. Um, and here's where the kind of positive externality lies, right? So just reading this, we're, we're seeing an r squared as our cost for roses, right? And then we're also subtracting the number of roses times the number of honey pots produced divided by two. So what we're seeing is the on honey pots, roses doesn't have any impact, right? The cost of honey pots is going to be the same. It's just this kind of static um, equation that we're going to be plugging in the number of honey pots to find our cost. On the flip side, though, with roses, as the number of honey pots increases that's being produced, we're seeing a lowering of the cost to production for roses. So this is a positive externality on rose production. This means by definition that honey pots are being underproduced. There's some sort of benefit that the honey pot makers aren't taking into consideration when they're maximizing individually. So in order to get the socially optimal amount of honey pots, we need to take into consideration that this lowers the cost that um, of rose production. So how we do so is we're going to look first at our social cost. So our social cost is going to be the two cost functions added up together, right? So this is the total cost to production in the entire society for both honey and roses. Okay, from there, we can take something called our marginal social cost. And we can take that specifically with respect to honey first. 
So our marginal social cost with respect to honey is just our derivative of our social cost function with respect to the variable h. So what we see there is going to be h over 2. So we're just dropping down this 2 and then simplifying the fraction 2 over 4. Right here, there's no h in this term, so we just get rid of it. And then here, we have a minus rh over 2. That's just going to turn into minus r over 2. So this is our marginal social cost for honey. We're going to do the same process for roses. So we're going to have a marginal social cost for roses. Again, we're going to do this social cost function. We're going to take the derivative of that with respect to the variable r now. And what we're left with is 2r minus h over 2. So again, we're just taking the derivative of this piece. We're taking the derivative of this r squared function. And then we're getting rid of this h squared over 4 because there are no r terms in that term. OK, so we have our two more marginal social costs. From there, we need to do another two sets of equations. So what we need to do is essentially put in place our marginal social benefit for honey equal to our marginal social cost for honey, and then the same thing for our other good, our roses. We need our so marginal social benefit to roses to equate to our marginal social benefit, or cost rather, to roses. Okay, and this is going to be our optimizing condition. So our marginal social benefit is going to be the total benefit that the economy receives per rose that's you know being sold and per honey pot that's being sold. So for honey pots, since there's no other factors here, we're not really looking at our demanders. The only benefit that we can really extrapolate here is the $2 per honey pot that's being sold. So we're generating $2 worth of value per honey pot. So our marginal social benefit for honey is just going to be two. You know, each unit of honey that's produced gives the society a benefit of $2. And then we're going to equate that to our marginal social cost of honey, which is going to be h over 2 minus r over 2, which we found before. Same thing. We're going to do the same process with roses. We're going to say our marginal social benefit to rose production is $10 per bushel because we're generating $10 worth of value here. And then we're going to equate that to this equation that we found up here, which is 2r minus h over 2. Okay, from there, we're going to have to do a little bit of math to simplify these out. So I'm going to start on this side. And what I'm going to do first is just multiply through this whole thing by 2. right? That way, I get rid of these fractions and make it look a little cleaner. So we're just going to be left with 4 equals h minus r. This step isn't necessarily, um, it doesn't have to be taken but it's a good step to kind of clean up your numbers and make it look a lot easier to deal with. So let's get this in terms of h. We're going to say h is equal to r plus 4. So we're just going to add r to both sides there. Okay, we have everything in terms of h on that. We can't really simplify any further. We're going to need to use this function over here and then equate the 2 over h. So over here, we can do the same trick, right? We can multiply by 2 thus getting rid of our fraction there, makes it a little bit cleaner to work with. Again, not a necessary step, but one I like to take. So 20 equals 4r minus h. From there, I'm going to add h to both sides and subtract 20 from both sides. And I'm left with h equals 4r minus 20. Okay, so now I've solved for h on both sides. Now my biggest step is going to be to equate the two together. So I can say r plus 4 equals 4r minus 20. I'm going to add 20 to both sides and subtract r from both sides. I get 24 equals 3r. So the number of roses that are socially optimal to be produced is 8. I can take this number and plug it back into either of these equations. This one looks a little bit more inviting to me. So I'm going to go for that. 
And so we can say honey is equal to eight plus four. So we should produce 12 units of honey. So our optimal pairing is 12 units of honey, eight units of roses. And so if we scroll up here, 12 units of honey and eight units of roses is going to be option A.